Hey, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can easily automate nearly any program with the UI Automation API. And it's a really, really powerful thing. Someone shared it with us the other day, and we want to just do a quick review of it. And if you hang out until the end, we're going to show you how you can get this tool from Microsoft, an inspection tool that'll make it very simple to use a GUI to go get the names and IDs that you're going to want. So exactly. let's jump into the code. Okay, awesome. So let me show you real quick what it looks like. So what we're going to do, this is the UIA interface uh, class. This is what Dimitri was pointing to. Now, this particular library, which was um, modified by, uh, let me double check the name. So this is the forum post and his name actually was, uh, where is? Descolada. Ah, Descolada, that's the one. So he created this particular, it, it is a, 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 he built upon the other, the other interface because yeah. he, he wanted to have a focus on automating browsers as well. So he has a few interesting functions there for that, but I, well, I we're gonna, gonna say, demonstrate something else. Let me give a, a 20 second background, just because if people are new to this entirely, there used to be the ACC approach, which is the accessibility yes. library for Microsoft, which was deprecated for this UI automation. It's a user interface. Automation, so, automation library, thing, yes. Um, from Microsoft. Now that was still like 10 years ago or something, right? Like this has been around for quite for a while. For a long time, yes. In AutoHotKey, we have a very good inspection tool written in ACC to inspect, to get a path to a given thing and some other stuff, and some decent examples of how to actually take actions on them. But right. they're, they're kind of tough to learn and they're not super friendly. This UI automation approach, Jethro was did initial work on it in AutoHotKey, but we didn't have an inspection tool. We had a way to kind of click default things, but we didn't have right. a way to easily and get, get the, the information path. right so this is why if you can tell i am so excited because yeah. it, this yeah, is now now this one is actually this is, <laughs> i can't describe what a game changer this is it's so far off right. the charts so get excited yeah. <laughs> now the uia interface what the, the main uh, part the main you know pro that it has is that it is supported by many programs. Many of the newest programs have a UIA interface already. Well, again, because it's not "quote unquote" new, right? It's no, it's not new. So it has while. been around, and it has been part of. Whenever you create a new program, it actually you have to build that for accessibility purposes. So for somebody who is blind, uh, the program should have a way for to to be able to list everything that is there, so that it can read it out out loud for somebody that cannot read something like that. That's what the UIA interface was built for. But now we could use it to automate stuff. And uh, it is really simple. Actually, in this particular case, I, I will just show you one or two examples of, of the main basic examples that came with the library. He runs Notepad. He gets a, the object because it's a class that you create an object for it based on that class. And after that, he's just waiting for the Notepad. And then he does the very interesting thing of grabbing an element from a window. Now, uh, this is the key point about UIA automation is that you're gonna be working with elements all the time. So your elements is what you can get. And there's several ways that you can get an element. It could be from a handle, like this particular function allows you to, but it can be also from a mouse position. You can get an element by X and Y coordinates. When you put of that particular coordinate, the um, element information is gonna pop up. Now, after you do that and you get the element name, which is what he's doing, uh, he first got the element for the window and then inside the window, he found the document element and then he sets a value to it. So he actually wrote information to that element. That's the only thing that he did. And when you run this, what you will notice is it's just very simple. You will see Notepad opening and just with the lorem ipsum text in there. But the funny thing is that it, you know that when you run Notepad by itself, it does not contain any text. So he actually set the text for it on line 13, which is a very interesting thing that you can actually manipulate it. And he has another example here, which is, um, again, he's also setting the text. But then after that, he's trying to click buttons on the menu. So in this case, he's going to click on the file menu item and then on the save menu item. So 
he added uh, another uh, function here, which is very important, which is one of the ones that I wanted to kind of like talk about, which is the dump all function. So what this does, the dump all, it returns all the elements that you have access to. And not only it gives you the elements, it also gives you the path to those elements. So you can refer to the elements by name, how he's doing in here by file and save, which is very nice in this particular context. But sometimes you might need to get the path instead of the name. So let's run the script. It will do the same thing. It will just open notepad, empty for now, but it will display this message box which gives you a list of the current elements. And each of those numbers here on the left side is kind of like a path. The second control, so you have the first control that is the text editor. The second control is the status bar. The third control is the window itself. You know, now below the text editor, there are some other controls and that's what they signify here. Those little one dot one is just controls that are Children, child yeah, yeah, those are parent-child relationships. A preview or something like that. Exactly, a tree view. Uh, you can use that number, those numbers, to build a tree view very easily. So now, but you get the name of the control. Notice that you get the line down, the horizontal, the columns, and stuff like that. And uh, you will notice here that you have the file button. You see that, which is a menu item. And then, then you can actually go ahead and click on that particular item, which is part what he's doing right here. He finds an element by name and type, and he's using file, which is the name. And this, what he's using as menu item, in the message box, you could see that it says menu item. One quick thing though, in here is showing it with a space, but over there, here on the code, you, you would not use the space, right? So this is something that you have to keep in mind. But after you refer to it, you can click the element. And, and this is the interesting thing. Now you can just name stuff on your window and then just click on it. And that's exactly what the code is going to do. As soon as I click OK now, it says like OK to test saving. Remember that it set the text to the lorem ipsum. And now when you click on it, it's going to go ahead and click on the menu by itself and give me this window. So basically, the script automated everything for me right there. So in general, you do not need additional tools to get the information that you want because you have the dump all method right here. But sometimes yeah, building something that is, you know, a, a little bit place. easier. Yeah. And that's what I was going to say. Like sometimes it is a little bit easier if you have access to an interface that you can point and click and it is just, just gives you the information real quick. Well, but it's, it's the IWB yeah. to learner tool, the ACC library to inspection tool, right? These right. things, they just make it faster and even you know iwb2 learner tool type thing right mm -hmm. we both know hey you can go into your development console and inspect yeah. all this stuff but there's eight million things going on in there at and the for same those time of yes. us that just want to focus like i don't i know exactly what i i need this i don't need i, I, I don't need this and, and right. a great example of that is the microsoft tool so if we open it right. up real quick you just click on inspect you will notice that, uh, let me select here. First of all, you have to switch to the UI yeah. automation. Um, so, because this is the old one, the Microsoft Accessibility, ACC library. But now you go and switch to the UI automation. And now when you start looking at stuff, now notice all this freaking information that 99% of it, you're not gonna be using. So this is what we're referring to, that sometimes it's a lot of information. And of course, and you can modify it, you yeah. can modify it and you can actually, you know, get only the values that you want, but right. you would have to spend time, you know, go into the right. option settings and then removing the things that you don't want and finding the one that you want. And there are many, <laughs> so it's going to take a little time for it. So it, it, this tool, for example, and, and let's just go ahead and create a quick example so you can see how easy it is to go ahead and create um, this. The first thing, again, we have to get the uh, UI automation to uh, um, interface. So UIA interface, I just need the interface. I'm I was just... gonna say, if people aren't used to using classes and objects, you know, I'll put a link into our objects course, which helps. Uh, yeah, help it's gonna be very difference. good for understanding this one, because in this case, I could just use the new keyword and just do it like that, new UIA interface. And that's gonna be saved into this particular uh, uh, variable. So now that I have that, I want to do a few things. I want to actually get 
the um, let's let's try to automate uh, Excel. And what I did is that I just added a few numbers here, and I will show you what I want what, what I want to do with this. Um, but first, I need the handle from uh, Excel. So let's go ahead and say Excel. Um, let's get the handle first. HWMB. And now win win exist. Right, there we go. So this is gonna be HK exe excel.exe. So with that, I already get just by using the win exist function, it would get me the handle to it. And now I'm gonna use the UI automation tool to get um what we're gonna get is the um element from handle. This is the function that we're looking for. So I'm going to get an element from handle and the handle that I'm going to pass is this one. So that's the only thing that I need to do. And now my Excel variable here is containing an object that I can use to find stuff and click on stuff. So I'm going to use the Microsoft L uh, viewer here, the inspector tool, just to get something. And what I want to do is just get what this is, right? So I'm going to use my highlighter here to make sure that I'm getting the right information. And here on the, let me see, on the right side here, the name, the increased font size is exactly what I'm looking for, okay? Because I could use the name to find the element and click on it. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to, just for the sake of it, I'm just going to loop five times. And in Excel, I'm just going to find element. So let me see. First, let's find first by name. So I could use uh, the by name here. I already have the name. And after I find it, I'm just going to click on it. Did, did you say you have to remove the spaces there in the name? No, it was not on the name. It's on the type. So you see when we, we, we have, so you have two things. You have the name and the type. And in the example that we were looking at, he's using file, which is the name. And the type is the second part, which is the menu item. On the type, I have noticed that it usually is uh, without spaces. So be mindful of that, but not, not with a name. The name can be exact, is usually exactly as it has been named. So in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and click five times on it, right? So if I take a look at my uh, window here, let me just put it there and I hit okay. Um, let me double check if I got the right um, the right handle because if I didn't get a handle, yes, I did. Okay, so it is not really uh, clicking right now because I have to. I think I have to open the uh, interface in a different way. Let's just go ahead and open the interface this way. Um, the new keyword is uh, whenever you use it, you have to be very careful with it because it bypasses some things. So in this case, if you just use the class like this and, and add it like that, it might behave a little bit differently depending on how the class was created. Okay. So what I'm going to do, because it has to inherit from another one. So now let me try it again. Let's just go ahead and inherit it directly how it should behave. And now if I go ahead and click, oh, there you go. Now the clicking is working there. So let's just remove the break now and let's just run the code. And as you can tell now, I was able to click on this button without really clicking. I just needed to get the name of the element. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean the name that was assigned to it on creation. And usually if you put the mouse over them, you might have the same name as they have in the tooltip. So uh, basically, if I try decrease font size, and and the other really cool thing about like this, that. here's two main things also that we should have mentioned at the beginning. One is this is similar in the sense of control an API, right? You can be right. doing stuff with your mouse; it's not going to affect. You know, you don't have to worry about your sending keystrokes, right? Across different versions, like you could give me this code, and it should run just fine on my instance of Excel, also, right? Right. Now. Right. Because it's very unlikely that the names change that much. Um, so so the, the, that particular button is going to have that name in many different versions of Excel. And as you noticed, 
It is just a matter of putting the mouse over it, getting the name, and that's it. If something doesn't work and you think it's because the name is not being found or whatever, then you just go ahead and check on it. But in general, as you can tell, the library is really simple to use. The concept is uh, basically like this. You would load your object, get an element. It could be either by handle or by other, by other means, because you have, for example, the UI automation dot element from, and then I have point. Now this particular function, the element from point allows me to get, give an X and Y position. Okay. And this two, if you give, uh, for example, mouse get position, mouse get position, and you get X and Y here, you get the mouse positioning, and then you can get the element that is on that mouse location. And from there, you can just go ahead and send clicks and do other kinds of stuff. So in general, this particular class allows you to have access to a lot of things from other programs that you're not usually able to automate easily. You, you would know, be able to do it with this one. Yeah, oh, we looked sure. at DaVinci Resolve real quickly. Yeah. That's one that for us is troublesome, uh, problematic in that it, even the ACC library is not accessible, if I remember right in that. But yeah, that is right. This had some that you could use the UI automation. Uh, right. Other things are, you know, very, very cool. And, and this is just early days, right? Give us a little time. We're going to make some really cool tools. <laughs> exactly. But if you so want to get this inspect tool, I'll put a URL on the screen right here where you can download it, um, at least to start kind of playing with it. Or you right. can do like Isaias is mentioning, you can go in and just uh, look for a mouse over and try to use that name. Right. right, exactly. So basically, as you can tell here, I just put the mouse over. And just by the fact that it's being highlighted, it tells you that the class library is right. actually yeah. uh, looking at it. Inside. Right, yeah. exactly. And as soon as you're able to do that, that means that you will be able to send clicks, get information. You want to get the text of this thing, just take a look at the name or the ID. Because in some cases, as in this, this is the case, it doesn't have a name, but right. you have another type of things that you can use for getting it, like the class name or the automation ID, any type of other uh, type of information that you can use to identify that, you can use it to go ahead then and grab the text from it or click on it or do whatever actions you want to perform. So again, this is a, an amazing tool. I, I am really excited that um, uh, there is a library that is now working a little bit more stable and has a little bit of improvements with uh, uh, Chrome and Chromium in the examples. It has something that has to do with that. So again, people like to automate Chrome, right? <laughs> well, and, and I mean, there's just so many tools out nowadays that don't use the older style of Windows controls. And so exactly. Yes. So you will need a, the UI automation for accessing that. Yes. Awesome. So uh, chime in here if you have any questions on it, but we're getting ready for us to be making more videos on the topic and some tools to help inspect with it. Yeah.